I, teams are kind of happy to be on the red side at this point just because so much slips to the red side. There's, you just can't snap up the best champion with blue side. Pick up some great picks on the red side. The Jana ban confirms. We're going to see at least a couple of those really powerful picks come through. Yeah, the likes of Jarvan, Lissandra, Nah, all available now as LeBlanc is the final ban here for Fornot. Very sort of mid lane focused, getting rid of that Xerath. Of course, respecting Apaps and Christmas trees, looking to take away the Nah. And almost this is a situation of someone, the Tormentor, finally gets to, the Tormented finally gets to unleash the power. Oh, the, yeah. That play from Swiper. Swiper was dominant in that top lane. And the Lissandra pick for Suddenfield just really didn't work out. Got bossed around by Swiper. Died 1v1 crucially early. And it's got snowballed out lane. Every time we saw uh, Lissandra re-enter lane, whenever we saw Christmas trees go back to top lane, we'd, we'd go away, come back top, and he'd be low health, getting dived again. So... Gonna give himself a bit of that power pick. They're gonna pick up that now, as as Pace Time mentioned in the last series. Saw some nerfs, but uh, still super powerful. Yeah, not too worried about that. His boomerang, a little bit different, but he's still that monster. I mean, that kit he, he has access oh, yeah. to, all the abilities between the transformations. A wonderfully powerful champion is now. Oh yeah, but they are gonna lock that one in, and Fornot now get to respond. And Lissandra and Jarvan are sticking out like sore thumbs, but do they have other options here for power picks? We haven't seen much of the rumble on the Rift today, and yeah, that's true. been a pick, at least in the LPL, that's been seeing a lot of power. It's also an Oceanic sort of standard pick here. There's a lot of top laners that do favor that one. You know, when we see Immunity, we expect to see JK Smithy picking up that rumble. Yeah. Probably one of the most known rumble players in the scene yeah, right Jack here. Jack Attack as well. Jack Hull. Attack also. There's, there's, there's definitely been names that play the rumble, and rumble, I think, in competitive play was sitting about, at least last weekend, about a 70% plus yeah. win rate in competitive across all the top leagues. So, I mean, the power of that equalizer, we've seen countless uh, rumbles in the LPL get ahead and just dominate games on their own. So there's a lot of power available in the champions, but no, Fortnite's actually going to focus on some fundamentals here. They're going to stick on picking up the Nami here. Carlos Scott is going to pick that up. But the Lee Sin jungle pressure. We talked about getting a bit of jungle pressure early. Lee Sin provides it in spades. Yeah, it's definitely fantastic for that one, but it does leave up that ever-prevalent Narvin combo, which has been working out so well overseas, of course. In China, not so well, but North America, 100% win rate for that combination and straight into the hands of Sudden Fear. And we'll see whether they lock that one down. A Pink Bomi had a decent game early on Jarvan. So we'll see whether they lock that one in. The option is there, but the counter pick of Nami, sort of picking the Nami away from Brawler, who had a decent showing on that champion in the last series, but I find it interesting that they're putting that much respect on this guy. Maybe they look at it as kind of a blocker pick to those AoE Wombo combos with Nami, you know, just the the tidal wave coming through, or maybe the perfectly timed bubble yeah, being enough influence to stop it. But, I mean, they could go all in here and go for, say, Azir and Jarvan and just be like, all right, we're creating all the walls. There's, there's plenty yeah. on the rift, but we're going to create plenty of artificial walls and uh, deal with it. That could be the flavor they're going for, but we already seen a lock and come in here. It's going to be Ember Moon taking away that Ezreal, the CNJ special, yeah. the Ezreal, and the Lissandra they picked up. But given the pick's not going to be the top, top Lissandra this time. Probably pigeonholing it into the mid lane. Yeah, and it's an intelligent pick up here as well because Lissandra very, very strong. I mean, Christmas Trees didn't have the greatest time, but he's not going to have to play this time. Apaps is probably going to be on that one in the mid lane, and we'll see what Fornot answer with here because, as you mentioned, that Ezreal picked away from CNJ, but he's got a few more things in his wheelhouse here. Of course, he could bring out that Caitlyn, which happily outranges an Ezreal. And I have to wonder what Moya's going to pick up. He went for the super utility focus safe laner in Oriana and was punished for it. So he's going to probably want to play on the front foot here. But Lissandra's such an interesting blocker pick. And mulling over the, the Cassiopeia, I'm only going to say mulling over because I would imagine Moya would pick a mid laner for himself. Yep, speaking of which, this is one of the picks that does tend to get banned away from him. Is Nidalee has been respected quite a lot in the ban phase, um, especially coming through the OCS. And I would not be surprised if that one came through. Carlos is God having an opportunity to hop on the tree here as well. And Carlos is God is fantastic on these burly champions. I mean, you mentioned the Aurelia, of course, loves getting in amongst it. And you have to think Maokai is going to do it. And I really like returning to that Nidalee pick, which again was successful in that immunity uh, series in the promotion stages, mainly because I noted that Xerath was banned here. Makes sense after you saw Paps last series, right? But Xerath is one of the good champions against Alessandra just because Xerath... Alessandra is so pow fantastically powerful in the top lane. And why we see her so much in the top lane is that against melee champions, 
she can boss them around with her short to medium range spells, and they find it hard to lane against all that instant wave clear. But when you have a lot of range like Azerath, you're able to farm with impunity very hard. You'd have to go for yep. a sheer turret dive to be able to lock down that Xerath. So I was looking down being like, all right, so some of the long range meta picks have been banned away. But we forgot about that in Italy. I mean, although she's going to have trouble dealing with the pushing in the early game, she's got plenty of range, that's for sure. And the thing that I really love here is Sudden Fear's response. It's like, oh, we're going to get poked? Okay, we're just going to pick up as much hard engage as we can, locking in the Leona and the Jarvan. They have so much lock up on that team. That's ridiculous. I mean, like, there's engage teams and there's a sudden fear team where it's like <laughs> they've got so many go buttons. Whether it's the Glacial Path, which indicates, of course, the Frozen Tomb coming out, whether it's the Narvan combo. And Leona, hell, the support has plenty of long ranged engage as well. So there's so much Wombo here, but they're kind of. It's all in on the Wombo. That's oh, all yeah. they really have in this comp is Wombo AoE team fight. Whereas, I mean, let's go back a, like a year ago. It was all about Nidalee poking people out. And you know, if, if this was a year ago, you'd say, all right, Sudden Fear are going to really struggle because whenever four not group up, they're going to throw the spears down and take objectives. And that, while that could still happen today, obviously the flavor of Nidalee's changed a little bit since that time. Fornot do have a lot of answers to Wombo. They have a Malka. I mean, Malka, of course, yeah. has the AoE 20% damage reduction. They have Nami, the first pick Nami. Yeah. Remember, Sudden Fear have picked full-on engage into a Nami. Like, Nami's all about disengage. It's not the Janna, but of course, Janna was banned during the Companions of Pitch. It's the strongest disengage option there. So they have a strong team fighting champion in Maokai, strong disengage in Nami. Fornot really do have some interesting options here, and we saw how hard they can snowball with these Nidalee comps. But they were also guilty of being over aggressive. You'll remember that their Nidalee comp got way ahead, and then we saw Claire on Fizz almost wrestle the game back single handedly, picking up a lot of kills because Fortnite took a poke comp and was like, all right, we'll team fight, we're ahead. So yeah. they, they can make those mistakes that you know newer teams are always likely to make. But you have to say, the comps here are like about as polar opposite as possible. And as well, the thing that I really, really love about this Nidalee pick is if you get that Lee Sin gank to come through and land a spear, that Sonic Wave Resonating Strike for the finish is so terrifying to have to deal with. And when you talk about execution damage, that's basically a firing squad there. Yeah, Two-man exactly. firing squad coming out. So, And it used to be the case, because it was many moons ago, you'd never want to gank a Nidalee lane because you didn't have the CC. It still doesn't have the CC, obviously, but you didn't have much execution damage. With the Hunter change, you know, once they reworked Nidalee, the mm. burst damage at the end there, you, as you say, that combo is potent. Yeah, that, that takedown is named correctly, mm. ladies and gentlemen. But the thing that I'm worried about here is this Ezreal pick. It doesn't really fit in my mind just because it doesn't do quite enough burst damage when the lockup that's going to come from Sudden Fear here is sort of very, yes, we're going to lock you up, but from then on, you've got this window to do damage. And is that going to just let Four not in and they can run away with this? Or do you think that there's a different tactic? Is the True Shot Barrage enough? I mean, the True Shot Barrage is nice, but again, like if you're focusing on burst damage as this Ezreal, you'd probably want to go for a more non-meta build, like a Bloodthirster earlier. Just stack some of that AD, because it does scale very well with the AD. I still think we're going to see the blue Ezreal, and, and on first glance, you're like, but they've got a lot of mid-game power. Is, is it the right move to go for a stacking item? And my first instinct was, no, maybe that'd be a problem, but you think about it here, look down this comp, Sudden Fear are going to do one thing, that's dive in. They're not going to think about peeling for one second. They're going to go straight in. All their members, even their support, is going to say, yep, let's go in there, lock up this Graves. Remember, Graves, 525 range, short range carry. Makes a lot of sense to have a lot of Wombo initiate against the short range carry. He has that quick draw, but of course, you know, once Apaps gets on top of you as Lissandra, he's going he's to inevitably fall. So it makes a lot of sense to have hyper mobility from the AD carry. And there weren't really that many meta options available right here. So although they'll have... As you'll go into a bit of a power trough, if he can get going, if we can see that 18 to 20 minute Iceborne Gauntlet, so he has the mobility to fend for himself and do poke damage, that's a really good thing to support the AoE Wombo they have alongside. So I like the mobility because he's not going to get any peel, that's for sure. Yeah, well, that's the thing that I was just about to mention is the fact that, yeah, you're right. I mean, Leona's just going to be going straight in there and Ezra's going to be hanging out on his own and it's a very sort of Chiefs-esque type playstyle as well where they just leave Radio on his own. No wonder Ezreal's his favorite champion because Rosie's often right in amongst it killing everyone. So I really like that tactic, especially paired up with this Leona. But it might be dangerous in the laning phase because he's up against a Graves here in the hands of CNJ. And you have to feel like that damage potential in the laning phase is going to be really scary. I mean, the early laning phase of the previous series, I believe it was Legacy versus uh, Fauna indeed, 
that we saw the Graves versus Ezreal matchup, and CNJ did just fine in that matchup mm. early, and then a couple of skirmishes changed lane, especially that late crit that uh, got the first kill for Graves in that lane, kind of snowballed it pretty hard. But in terms of early laning, at about 8 to 10 minutes, they were equal in CS. So there is potential for Ezreal to do capably in that lane. I don't know much about M for Moon's ability on the Ezreal, so maybe he is able to really, like CNJ, go competitive in that lane. However, you'd expect CNJ as a seasoned Ezreal player, and Ezreal main almost, you know, between Ezreal and Caitlyn, really his main champions right there. He'd probably know the limits of that champion. He's opted into this matchup, and you're right, on paper, painful for Ezreal, but we'll have to see how it turns out. Yeah, we certainly will have to see, but looking down these lineups as well, it's not clear which stages of the game both of these teams are really aiming for here. I mean, Maokai fantastic in the late, late game. Nara is also relatively good, but Graves... Quite early on focus, where do you think these teams are really looking to make their mark and make their moves on this game? I guess my issue here for Sudden Fear is how do you kill a late game Maokai? They don't have the tools to deal with this Maokai in the late game. If Maokai ever gets, say, the Rod of Ages Frozen Heart into, you know, Spirit Visage or something like that, I don't think Blue Ezreal is going to bust through that. And the rest of their AoE damage, while respectable, while it'll hurt the Nidalee and the Graves... It's not going to hurt this Maokai. And Carlos's god could get massive on the Maokai. So if Maokai can really get ahead, if there's no lane swaps, if it's standard laning and he can just farm away and pick up I think around the 30-minute mark, I would say this Maokai is going to be unkillable. And that's kind of where Sudden Fear's Wombo stops. Because if he gets in the perfect position, 20% AoE damage reduction, and then the amount, you know, with some cooldown reduction, the amount of lockdown and just how tanky this Maokai is going to be, if they can never get past this Maokai, and of course Ezra has those skill shots, will have to hit the first target in front of his face. He's not going to be able to kill a late game Maokai, and that's where Sudden Fear will struggle. Yeah, that could definitely be rough. But if all of this engage does go down before Moya can land any skill shots around that mid game, you could imagine that things could be looking a little bit better here for Sudden Fear. There's definite points of power on both sides. We're going to see whether Fornot can get some objectives early, because if they let all the objectives go to the mid game Wombo combo that we see on the side of Sudden Fear, they might struggle. But if they are able to get some objectives early and they're competitive against this team fight comp, then I like Fornot. So again, both teams have win conditions. Whoever can stay closest to them will win this game. Yeah, we'll see what happens because we are under the rift, ladies and gentlemen. Sudden Fear taking on Fornot. Both of these teams falling in their last matches against the Big Dogs, Legacy, and the Chiefs. But now looking to pick up their first win of the OPL. And Sudden Fear starting on our blue side. But you can see already very defensive starts to come in. And it looks like we're going to have standard lanes. Yeah, we definitely haven't seen the flavor of early invading, looking for lanes. In fact, we've seen lane, standard lanes across the board today. I think that trend will continue. Continue. We haven't seen too many lane swaps in the Oceanic scene. But maybe the first team that really starts to push the advantage of the lane swap will really get ahead in terms of the meta over here. But uh, so far, we've seen consistent early fanning out and basically dark jungles from both sides. Yeah, I find it really quite interesting that there has been a complete uh, lack of any sort of attempted lane swap just because of how things went last year. I mean, there were lane swaps left, right, and center coming through from our players and all sorts of different level one strategies. But so far, it's been very defensive and very standard. Yeah, that's just been the trend so far. And look, it's a long league. We're going to see 14 games from yeah, each true. of these teams. So we'll see what metas come through. You'll remember that... Um, it just hasn't been necessary so far. Like we've seen pretty standard lane. We've never seen any team pick up counter, pick into a counter matchup. There's yeah. been a lot of competitive lanes so far. Only really the Rise has super struggled so far. But uh, look, standard laning start up starts up here, and we'll wait to see who comes out with the first points between these promoted teams. Yeah, we'll see who's going to be the first one to get on the board. And you can see Apap's already putting a lot of pressure on in this mid lane, as well as the top side of the map. Carlos has got going aggressive have no idea where to look at this stage because everyone's punching each other, Papa Smithy. Yes, yeah, a lot of early trading. It's still a tank battle up top. You might be forgiven for not thinking that when you see the really small character model that is that mini Nar. <laughs> but of course, we know he'll turn into a late game brute. Yep, a really, really big Nar. Don't worry. It's mini Nar for a reason. His Twisted Advance is going to come in here on top of Christmas trees. Getting punched as well. Does almost have that engaged to come through but speaking of engaged brawler on top of Zelda he just gets obliterated the ignite the flash from M for moon here as well as cnj trying to opt in for a trade but he's getting obliterated brawlers right up in his face zenith blades up again shield of daybreak surely gonna be here the heels popped though and cnj more than happy to play up on these guys and no secondary ignite available there for brawlers so they weren't able to burst down the second target in cnj but 
Just really good usage of the level two spike right there, but Naya's coming in. He's coming in indeed. And level three now as well as CNJ. Level two tries to come in. There's a quick draw to come down as well as Carlos has got trying to make some work up here on the top side. And Apaps and Moya fighting it out here in the mid as well. There is action all over the place. No kills going to be coming down on that bottom side, but Apaps forced to use that flash. There's a takedown. Moya secures a kill as well. And that's the Moya we saw against Immunity. Very good 1v1 mechanics right there on the Nidalee. Apaps had the glacial path available, but th predicted that it would be smarter just to walk away, but he walked straight into his death. Yep, very unfortunate. And so far, both of these teams just coming straight out of the gates furious. You can imagine that these, uh, these losses, the way that they react to them is by being more aggressive on the rift. And sometimes in these situations between teams really looking for a win, we thought we might get a very passive laning phase as both teams... Uh, built up to a late game team fight, but thankfully we get the exact opposite here. Explosive action just from the start of this game. Yeah, and they really, really want to prove to everyone that, yep, that last that last game, that's not an example of what we're capable of. And you can see it already being demonstrated. And as w especially Moira, I mean, that guy had an awful time in his first showing and really now trying to prove to us exactly why they're here in the OPL. And each time that Sudden Fear has picked up this Lissandra, first time on Christmas trees in the top lane, this time around, uh, Lissandra in the mid lane here really struggled with that champion. The Glacial Path hasn't been the escape tool that we'd expect. And it's solo kills against Lissandra in both top and mid against Sudden Fear. Yeah, unfortunate here. It's Christmas trees could be aggressed on on the top side. He's going to get that transform relatively soon. There's a Twisted Advance coming in. Naya here not going to land a Sonic Wave. There's a nice bounce to come in here as well as he transforms. And he's going to survive this one. But Infamoon, he has a tier so incredibly early in this game. But worth knowing, despite the fact that he picked up that first blood in the bottom lane, no no attack damage or no real combat stats afforded by tier. But in top, Christmas yeah. Tree's in trouble. Yeah, a lot of danger. The Sonic Wave, there's a resonating strike. Naya just says thanks for that and picks up that kill. It's a nice use of that Glacial Path to get out of the way of the pounce. But he as didn't have... going to dodge the spear. It's worth knowing, Christmas Tree's had that pink ward up there, so he must have just no, not noticed uh, the wraparound game coming out from Naya right there. And uh, look, pays for it with his life, and he's going to struggle in this top lane now that Maokai's gotten going. Yeah, very aggressive arcane shift from Infamoon, trying to bait this one out. Apap's now going to use that Glacial Path to get to safety. Naya's all over this map at this stage, and very patiently a pink bomb. He's waiting for something to happen here on this bottom side, just chilling out in that brush, maybe getting himself a drink. You know, going to the fridge. I mean, you opt into this blue Ezreal. You opt into at least a Mana Moon. You are opting into a Power Chop. So it's an ironic situation that despite picking up First Blood here, Infamoon has less combat stats than the Graves. Yeah, and there's actually a nice... <laughs> Whoa, his quick draw just went for so far. Bola couldn't even get the stun up there as Eclipse. Going to go off and he's going to lose those stats. But a Pink Bomi just unable to get that far into the lane. Yeah, but CNJ is on Graves, who of course has that passive. Does The true grit does uh, does give him the early magic resist to deal with the spells coming in from Leona's passive right here. So remarkably tanky, doesn't take too much, too much damage, shrugs it off. And in mid lane, Paps is just having no fun. Oh my goodness. And yeah, this Nidalee is having a great time. A Pink Bomi as well. He can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe as there's fights all across this map. It's Aqua Prison not going to land here, but CNJ going to aggressively move forward. Eclipse going to proc. M for Moon trying to turn this one around, but he just doesn't have the damage with this tier. And every time Moira is able to bring out this Nidalee, it's a consistent trend of just surprising damage and skirmishing. He always hits those really difficult Nidalee spears and gets the trades in early and forces his opponent out of lane. He did it against Claire, one of the most hyped lane ma laners in Ooh. Oceanic League. He almost takes out Bomi there as well. He's dominating on this Nidalee. And that would have been a kill there as well if that takedown had have come through. A decent flash coming through from a Pink Bomi to stop that one from coming down because, of course, the Ignite's still available there and no mana needed in that Cougar form. As we've just got tanks bouncing around in this top side. The Nar actually onto Carlos has got. Gets a house thrown at him here as well, but Carlos has got pretty tanky at this point and Fornok going to start off this dragon. There are multiple wards in here, though. There's the Glacial Path. There's a Frozen Tomb there. He's going to freeze himself up. The red team... Fornot managed to take down that dragon, and Zelda is going to flash out of there, sacrificing himself after picking up that objective. Is Naya, but the rest of Fornot are going to escape, and you could say that you know, kill for a dragon going to go the way of the dragon. There was three flashing health bars there for Fornot. You notice down the mana there, no mana on basically anyone. That's why it was such a slow dragon. It was surprisingly slow dragon from five members coming out there for Fornot. But the one answering kill, like you mentioned, 
is not the appropriate trade. If they manage to get those three exit kills, you'd say, yep, definitely in Sudden Fear's advantage, but one kill is not the par. Certainly is an Apaps now trying to put some aggression on here in this mid lane as Moya doesn't have very much mana, just going to use his E to clear out the last bit of the creeps and Primal Surge still afforded here as he's going to hang around for another wave, but Brawler, he's hanging out, he doesn't, mount, he doesn't mind which lane he's in, he's just wanting to get re Relic Shield stacks. And no mana items at all from Moya here, he has all combat stats and the difficulty there is that he needs to get into melee range to clear the waves without having any mana, so he's at risk of being dived by the Leona, but thankfully the pressure from Naya relieves the pressure in the mid lane. Yeah, not too bad at all. They're not going to spot out that pink ward there either as Apap's going to pick up his blue buff. And you can see Fornot aggressively warding out this red side jungle of Sudden Fear. Yeah, up the top lane here, Maokai's done very, very well. Normally when we see this Maokai versus Naya matchup, there's a lane swap before just to really prey upon Maokai's relative weakness in a 1v2 compared to to nah, but look, the trade's on. Yeah, Flag and Drag actually going to knock Carlos has got up. It's a decent arcane splash, but there's the flash after Carlos comes out of that one. He gets caught by the wall up though, and the Nah back into the lane. And Christmas Trees says, get over here, I need you dead. Yeah, excellent Nah mechanics coming out right there from Christmas Trees. Really trying to make a name for himself on that champion here this game. And for Moon, he's been smited. Yeah, he's been smited there as well. Oh, flashes out of the way of that Acro Prison. Going to have the Arcane shift up relatively soon, but it's not quickly enough as Moya secures that kill. 2-0-0 now on this Nidalee. A much different game for Moya. Even as that last Q came in, still three seconds left on that Arcane shift. Not enough time whatsoever, but up top we see they're trying to rush down this turret. Do they have enough damage to take it down? It's going to be a line ball. Yeah, they do have a few creeps left, but not going to be quite enough, and we'll see whether Carlos can make it up to that lane in time. Aqua Prison going to be used just to help clear out this wave of CNJ coming through here. But this bottom lane matchup, I mean, not going too badly here for, uh, for M for Moon. As he's going to clear out a whole bunch of creeps with that True Shot Barrage. Oh, actually, Christmas Tree is trying to go for the turret here. Does transform the Wallop to come down. And he's just trying to disengage from this one. We get slowed by that Arcane Smash. Carlos has got trying to chase him down. But, of course, this Maokai doesn't have anything yet. Twisted Advance actually finds his target. But, oh, my goodness, he's just not doing anything. The Arcane Smash to come in as well. It's a decent passive. No! It's just so hard to cast that particular fight just because nothing really happens. I did like your, your attempt to put emotion into what is a very slow-moving tank <laughs> fight in the top lane. But it was so surprisingly close on the Nah right there. He managed to just get away because he changed into minion alpha and was able to outrun the sapling coming out. So just safe as Nah and able to fight another day. Yep, not bad at all. Apaps now not looking too healthy in this mid side as Moya again very aggressive takedown not going to land here but they turn it around there's a glacial path and Apaps picks up the kill after a pink Bomi's there to help I love that from Sudden Fear right there they were able to bait Moya into melee form right there and of course once you commit to the jump in with the pounce right there you are free food yep and Naya almost free food himself had to use that flash in order to get out of the way as the ring of frost locked him down for a moment we are definitely seeing the return of the Athena's Unholy Grail right here, and CNJ's in trouble. Oh, nice footwork there by CNJ, but de gets caught. The flash out of the way of the True Shot Barrage, the Ignite sticking. Oh my goodness, so close as the collateral damage to come through in answer, but the heal's going to be popped for Emperor Moon, and he's going to be okay. CNJ is such an impressive AD carry. He has not died this game, and look at this. He still has his heal available despite falling so low. He's so confident in his ability to use those summoner spells smart. We see Brawler's trying to hug the brush, but of course CNJ smells a rat right here, and actually he's going to make to be able to stay in lane with the top up from the Nami heal. Yeah, Aqua Prison going to go wide there a little bit, but just playing a little bit of defensive duties is Zelda. And as you mentioned, yeah, CNJ, just the damage calculations coming out of this guy knows exactly how much he can take. Absolutely. The damage he deals and the damage he takes are really a th sign of a smart AD carry. To be able to estimate those things, which of course are influenced by stats like item pickups, rune sets, etc. His calculations are very on point, and it looks like Fauna are going to continue to press their advantage in the bottom lane. Yeah, actually, the spear's going to get thrown out. Not going to find its target here, but... M for Moon and Brawler have to be very, very careful as the creep wave is going to crash down here. The spear's coming through as well. The teleport coming down now from Christmas Trees. Wants to try and get in. Carlos is God actually going to be teleporting in as well behind everyone. There are five members of Fortnite, but that's a beautiful Aqua Prison. There's a tidal wave as well. M for Moon gets caught up by that one, but 
They're trying to turn this one around. Sudden Fear, oh, the kickback from Brawl of the Double Knock, a beautiful Solar Flare to come down as well. But no one falling just yet. Carlos has got his tank as much as he possibly can, as has Christmas Trees, who's trying to get that transform as quickly as possible. I feel like this might be a preview of the late game team fights as Carlos has got. He's still not even finished his first big item. He's clearly working on the Righteous Glory here, but already able to tank up so much damage. And if any more cooldowns are used to try and get through this front line, they just don't have the damage to kill the back line here. Just sudden fear. Yeah, and Moya though, very low on this mana. Does land a spear onto a pink Bomi there, who's still relatively squishy on this Jarvan. He's going to try and engage though, potentially. Doesn't quite get there. As everything sort of hanging on a knife edge for both of these teams trying to struggle for this vision advantage. Oh, that scrying orb was worth so much money. As there's a frozen tomb, the Nara as well. Here's the wombo combo from Sudden Fear. Only two members alive now for Fornot. And the flashes coming through on both sides, beautifully played and patiently played by Sudden Fear. The scrying orb was so fortuitous. They saw four members basically humped on top of each other right there. They got onto them. The four-man glacial tomb was huge from Paps. And look, if you have a Wombo combo and you opt into it, you get some explosive damage. Yeah, and Zelda actually going to miss the Aqua Prison here as well. The Hyper Proc and Christmas Trees picks up the fourth kill. Moya's actually come in here, though. Is it going to be the instant Quadra kill as he dodges out of the way of the True Shot Barrage? Brawler, he's going to get taken down. There's the triple for Moya. Christmas Tree's trying to come around, but no, Moya gets taken down eventually. But killing three members, that was beautiful. So we see the replay right here. The scrying orb comes in, and then Fortnite like, oh my dear. They eat so much AoE CC between the W and the ultimate coming out from the Sandra. We have to cut back to play just because so much has happened. Of course, subsequently, we saw those exit kills coming out from Moya right there. I mean, Moya basically picked up three exit kills in a 1v2, which became a 1v3. Might have even been a 1v4 at one point right there. Such an impressive player is Moya on that Nidalee. Even in skirmishes, not just the poke and execute, the skirmish play from him on the Nidalee is super impressive. Oh, yeah. 5, 2, and 0 now. Has that Athens on Holy Grail uh, picked up? There's actually a pink Rome he's going to find there. Nair finds himself smited as well. A little bit unfortunate. Dragon Rage Kick going to be used just to disengage. They have to give up stealing away that blue buff. And Apap's going to pick that one up for himself. And we have a little bit of a makeshift lane swap coming down as Fornot send a bunch of members up to try and pressure this out of turret. And we have a bit of time to take a breath as we saw so many skirmishes in a row right there. Even with that turret pickup, Fornot are 1,200 gold. But what I love about this team is they're certainly not playing like they're behind. They're playing so aggressively, looking for engage, looking for skirmishes, even when they're behind. And that's the sign of a team that really wants to win games on their own terms. They're not playing reactive League of Legends whatsoever here, despite being blown away by Legacy earlier. Almost definitely. The Pink Rome is going to find Naya. And this Lee Sin has had a rough game. Actually, M for Moon going to take down Moya. I... W what? Yeah, I wish we had a replay of that one, but it was just a wonderful flash heal that completely outplayed Moya right there. Baited when he had the hunted mark on his head. Man. For as good as Moya is on that champion, and for Moon is really impressively on this Ezreal. Oh, yeah, and when they pick it, to pick it away from CNJ as well, not necessarily a comfort pick. He's looking so comfortable on this Ezreal. And it's just great to, to see. It's just great to see such a watchable game between two promoted teams, two new teams to the professional scene here in Oceania. And across the map, we're seeing individual outplays which kind of tell me that once these teams get a bit more practice, get a bit more practice in their teams, really uh, nail down on their shot calling, I think there could be some really impressive displays from both these teams here today. Okay, they don't all have it on the rift at the same time, and it's been individual flashes of brilliance across the map by individual players, but that's really the recipe and the start for something truly special further down the road. Oh, it most definitely is, and as well, they need to feel out how these um, top teams actually rotate around the map and make these things happen, because you don't have that opportunity when you're just, you know, playing solo queue or things like this. So they now have this fantastic opportunity to really gain that extra strategy level to Four Not and Sudden Fear. And man, there's a lot of these players that I really want to watch grow as they come through this league. Yeah, Moya's Nidalee is going to become a thing, I think, just because he's so impressive on a champion that's really fallen out of favor in that mid lane. Yeah, actually, True Shot Barrage is going to come through here. Buckshot not going to find its mark. The kick now coming through. The teleport to be answered for. The smite on the come out. And CNJ going to pick up that kill. But Brawler's come from around the side to die. 
Right to CNJ's Christmas tree is teleported in, unfortunately, here. He's going to try and bounce out of there. Moya going to tank up this turret. Not going to worry about it too much because that Primal Surge is doing heaps of work healing him back up. Spear going to be coming through the side, but for not, they just want this turret. And just one of those awkward situations where teleporting in with no rage doesn't offer Oh my offer goodness, a the double knock-up to come in from a pink bomb. CNJ going to use that quick draw to get out of here. Naya actually safeguarding in and... All sorts of crazy things happening as this outer turret is still alive. It's going to be the focus, and now they want to keep moving. Carlos has got to come through the frozen tomb onto Apaps, but now he's way too far into the team of Fornot, and they turn around and finish him off. Sudden Fear, now with members respawning and regrouping, might be able to answer this one, but you can see this game so incredibly close, and Fornot not wanting to overdo it too much. And that fight at 18 minutes really illustrates why it's so difficult at the top level to pick to pick these AoE wombo comps and execute them. Because if you ever use one of those cooldowns inefficiently or one person's remove, you don't have a 5v5 fight. The result is it's just such a far cry from the Lissandra initiate we saw after the scrying orb earlier there. Oh, just yeah. a really awkward situation where they had very important uh, initi initiation uh, cooldowns up, but they weren't all up at the same time. And when they're scattered over that long time period, Fornot was just able to pick off the frontliner every time. Yeah, it was... Not really working out here for Sudden Fear, but we saw exactly what happens when it does. And if they can get the vision in order to pick these ones off, then it could definitely be working out for them as we proceed past this mid-game. Pink Bomi just going to be clearing out his jungle here a little bit. Has caught up to Naya as far as that jungle camp CS is concerned. And Naya's been impressive with a lot of his kicks, but hasn't quite managed to make an impact as much as he would have liked in the early stages. I mean, it's not a skirmish comp like we saw Legacy and Chiefs picking the Leaf Sin with here. It's, it's a very different flavor of Leaf Sin required in this situation just because he doesn't have the CC and Of course, he does with Maokai, but Nidalee is just a damage gank there. He has to provide most of the CC there, does Leaf Sin. In the bottom lane, you really need that Nami CC to hit, and of course, such an unreliable skill shot. So they haven't picked the sort of comp that Lee Sin's likely to shine in, but the disengage in team fights, like if he can get that fortuitous kick or whether it's Nah, whether it's Jarvan, whether it's Sandra, even on a Leona, it might change a team fight Wombo situation completely. And we've already just seen that if that layering's imperfect, Sunfield will struggle to win a team fight. Yeah, Carlos has got actually trying to engage here, but here is the Wombo. Zaldo getting aggressed on the Evanfoy, going to keep him alive here, but the Nah to come in as well. Fornot's health bars are so incredibly low, and Naira is dead. CNJ has somehow managed to escape, but no, he hasn't, because Emperor Moon is going to follow him out of that one. And we were talking about this just moments ago. If that Wombo actually works, oh, the steal of his own blue buff from Moya. That was beautifully, beautifully done. Yeah, Nidalee there, uh, Nidalee there really. Moya struggling in those jungle crevices to be relevant. Oh my goodness, the spear damage though, certainly relevant. Oh, most definitely. Do manage to pick up the second dragon though to sudden fear. We do see low health bars everywhere. So they have to be very careful with where they back right here. If Moya's interested, there is some poke and exit kills to be picked up, but maybe smarter to just push into this mid lane. Most definitely. He does have that blue buff available to him, so he's going to be healing up on this manner if he doesn't primal surge himself to death. Actually, that's the opposite of how that ability works, but he doesn't indeed. have too much of that mana left, so he needs another blue buff. He's going to pick that one up as well. Very early Snowball Aegis coming out of Bomi here at the 20-minute mark here. Second completed item after the... Warrior enchantment on that jungle chilling smite right here. I do like it because there's a lot of latent AoE magic damage coming in. I mean, it, it just stops some of that long range ex uh, execute potential coming out from the Nidalee as well. So, Maokai does the relevant base damages, but everything's going to be reduced by the Aegis. So, probably a smart pickup. Yeah, if, does he want to be um, jumping onto CNJ here though? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting question right there. It's just a situation that the Aegis obviously has a lot of AoE implications. So, it's probably smart to just pick it up here. It, of course, the Nidalee damage, the Void Staff's going to come in after that Death Cap. The damage is going to stick. But in this situation, you want to get it as soon as possible just to stop the, the Siege potential that we know this 4 not comp has. Oh, most definitely. And when you've got Spears coming out of the likes of Moya, who is fantastic on this champion. We haven't seen so, sort of too many clutch Spears, but was landing fantastic ones in lane in order to get himself ahead. And rolling out and mobying himself into this lane. And you have to respect this Leona. The amusing thing to me that we didn't really consider pre-game is that the Blue Ezreal, of course, we saw the Iceborne Gauntlet completed quite quickly. The Mirror Mana is already completed here. 
it does actually provide that consistent 30% AOE slow on the, uh, on the Mystic shot right there. So he does actually provide a little bit of setup CC. And the rest of his team has CC and spades. There is a bit of nice synergy there. And this is a snowballed Ezreal. Yeah, and you can see as well, oh, actually using that locket of the Iron Solari just to get some extra shields here as a collateral damage to come down from CNJ just to poke them off. Has noticed that there isn't any sustain coming out of this side and has decided, look, I'm just going to get as much damage as I can onto this squad. But there is so much initiation, they have to be so worried. They can never bunch. When they were spotted out with that scrying orb, the bunching is what cost them. So if they can spread their threats away and never allow AOE CC layering, they're in a great spot to siege. But if they ever clump up, that's when they're in trouble. And Fornot almost looking for Sudden Fear to be caught in transition here as they move towards the bottom side of the map, noticing a large creep wave. It's a nice slow push to come through from Fornot actually on the top and the bottom side. Scrying Orb not going to find them as they are all going to move into the lane and start this one off. And can they move around here inside because in time? Because Fornot have a lot of damage that they could be doing to this turret, but this teleport comes down. Oh, Aqua Prison just a little bit late here as Christmas Trees doesn't have too much rage, but out the backside, Moya just getting picked off. The rest of his team, though, the Solar Flare manages to slow down three members. The nice kick of Christmas Trees to get him out of this one. Carlos has got taking a lot of damage. The Frozen Tomb going to be used a little bit prematurely here, maybe. There's Naya's going to fall down, and M for Moon has so much damage flashing forward, picking up Carlos. has got CNJ now getting eaten alive by this Ezreal. flashing forward. Triple kill now. Could M for Moon have this one? Oh, doesn't manage to get over there, and Moya is going to limp away. M for Moon had his eyes on Openta. I mean, Sudden Fear was so lucky that Fortnite didn't apply pressure evenly right there. You look at their jungle. They had almost no defensive wards whatsoever down for this Fortnite rotation. Fortnite should have been able to pick up a free dragon right there, but they were scared away by Christmas Tree's teleport. I mean, we're going to see the replay right here. The first CC coming in from Paps is fairly uh, non-effective, and Moya is corralled away from this fight. But back in the fight, the Solar Fur is excellent right here. But watch M for Moon. He's on the side right here. He's able to free hit down Naya. And Naya just miscalculates how much damage this Muramana transform. And that's the key thing here. The auto attacks are doing surprising damage on this 4 knot team. The QW right there doing 60% of CNJ's health. Excellent exit kill right there. M for Moon free hitting is not something that 4 knot can afford. And Moya almost going down to that last Mystic Shot as well. And 8, 2, and 3 now for M for Moon. This guy's performance on this Ezreal is fantastic. Hasn't quite managed to keep up in the old farm area, but he's happy to farm champions. Yeah, and it's going to be a situation where that damage is going to be huge until Maokai can finish another I armor item on top of this Frozen Heart he's building right here. He, can, he can't ever really just damage through a super tanky Maokai. Once he starts in the 300, 400 armor, you know, the Thorn Mail perhaps to supplement the, the armor, armor items he has already, that's when the Malkai is going to become a huge force in team fights. But in a scattered fight like that, where people weren't fighting around their super tanky Malkai, Fortnite will pay the price. And he doesn't even quite have his second item built up, as you mentioned, not quite having that frozen heart. And Sudden Fear looking to go for their third dragon when it is up in about 40 seconds. And setting up for it, you can see they've got so much vision around here as Nia gets caught out by a Q. The Glacial Path to come through here as well. There's a flash into the Frozen Tomb. True Shot Barrage picks up instantly two kills. And then the Mystic Shot for the third. Beautifully played. Christmas Trees trying to hunt down Moya here. And our cameraman couldn't even find him because he's moving so fast. Doesn't matter. Christmas Trees has got it. Four dead. This could be Baron. This blue Ezreal is so massive in the mid game right here. 11, 2, and 3. We talk about C and J's Ezreal. Maybe we need to talk about M for Moon's Ezreal right here as it's going massive big guns in the mid game. And Christmas Tree, he's never had the rage available for the initiation Nar ultimate, but he's got so many initiation friends. That time it was Pups with the flash into the double stun and ultimate right there. Sudden fear, they're executing a difficult team comp against a highly mobile Fornot flawlessly. It's beautiful to watch, and Apap's just knowing exactly what he's capable of. Look at this Glacial Path. Yeah, the flash into the Glacial Path right there is wonderful into the Frozen Tube. The AoE one, but it's an instant triple kill from Ezreal, which of course simplifies a free fight, one fight right there. That was a, just an excellent Nar ultimate also, getting the exit kill on Moya. Everything going right for Sudden Fear. Oh, most definitely. Dragon has come up, though. Sudden Fear, they've gone back to shop, and then they're coming back into this one. Naya's just going to face check Brawler, but... Nice safeguard, going to get him to safety here. The rest of Sudden Fear not quite available to pick that one up. But this is an example of Sudden Fear just having all the vision. 
Yeah, they have a huge vision strangle aggressively right here. But hilariously, what, five minutes ago, Fornot had all the advanced vision in the Sudden Fear jungle. It just feels like whichever team takes momentum gets the wards down. The enemy team doesn't realize the fact that they're suddenly on the back foot, don't have the defensive wards down, and are punished accordingly. Yeah, you can see Christmas Trees playing so far up here, and the power of this NAR is definitely evident as Apap's just going to engage once more. Carlos's god is going to get obliterated, and Moya luckily dodging out of that last Mystic shot. Brawler more than happy to tank this turret. This Leona is so tanky. 0 to 12, so it has so much kill partic participation here as well this game. And Naya, oh, nice four-man kick to come in. Doesn't manage to get a kill, but it's going to deter them from being on this tower. These barrened up minions, though, do so much work. And Smaoka is really struggling. We see Christmas trees and Cindy are... Oh, they're trading in the bottom lane. It's going to be close. Yeah, Sonic Wave going to land here under M for Moon, but he gets locked up by Brawler. Does get tagged. The big pounce to come in. The shutdown from Moya. Brawler's going to follow suit. You have to imagine he's hunted. The takedown for the double. Apaps now has been discovered by Naya, but he may actually have bitten off more than he can chew. There's actually the Frozen Tomb to come in. Oh, the last second on that Zonya's Hourglasses. Moya's going to pick up that kill with the last tick of Ignite. Zaldo flashing around here, and the Aqua Prison going to land onto a pink Bomi. And the fish is going to escape yet again with those Mobies. Such a fast scattered fight across all of the map. In the bottom lane, off camera right there, actually, Graves was shut down just as he was getting a huge push on it. He spent that whole time side pushing the top lane. It was almost going to get damage onto the inhibitor turret because it was quickly out jeweled by Nar, but... Across the map, skill shots being flashed. Excellent team play, but it's very even across the board. But affords still sudden fear with their correct layering of CC so far. A 7k gold lead. Yeah, 7,000 gold is the lead, but even on the structures. And you have to say that Carlos's god is still a Maokai. So they could still get to this ultra late game stage. Now has that frozen heart to go on top of that righteous glory. And... When that Spirit Visage comes in, he's going to be very difficult to kill for everyone on the team. And of course, has the Mercury's Tread, so you're not going to be stopping this tree from hitting you with stuff. I mean, but, I mean, across this, the, the, uh, the competitive scene, though, we've seen kind of two flavors of Malco. When we see the Rod of Ages Frozen Heart come out at a good part time, we talk about the unkillable tree Maokai in the front line. But, I mean, we just saw Maokai being full-on dived by three oh, members yeah. and dying fairly instantly here. 0 4 2, 76 CS behind his lane opponent. Wait, Jarvan's in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, Pink Bomi is going to get caught. Does actually manage to flag and drag while the Aqua Prison was levitating him. So that is definitely some smooth moves. He gets a ward over the edge there as well, but almost got caught out, did the Pink Bomi. League of Legends geometry amuses me sometimes, Atlas. <laughs> Most definitely. Uh, he's just swimming up in the sky over a wall. No problem. The sky dunk also coming out later, no doubt. <laughs> One can only hope. As Red Buff is going to go over to CNJ here in full vision of Sudden Fear. Not too much that they can do because that was about to fall down. And one thing that you have to say about CNJ is he's kept that farm going. 267 now in a comparison to 220. So 47 CS in the lead. Not doing too bad, but... Had to forego picking up the Phantom Dancer in order to get an earlier Last Whisper. And it's a case that the kills here obviously are making up a lot of the gold difference between Ezreal and Graves. It's about 2,000 gold advantage for Ezreal despite the big CS deficiency. And a top lane matchup is where the big difference is at. Of course, Nara is massive and Maokai, he's, he's at the risk of looking squishy. Yeah, and here's the engage. There's the flash actually into all of that lockdown and everything is going off right now. The Frozen Tomb to come down and Fortnite members are just melting. Left, right, and center. Emphamoon still at full health. There's the scrying orb. Moya, he's the target that Emphamoon's looking for. Mystic shot for the triple kill. Easy as you like. And CNJ looking to try and just find a way out somewhere. And he thinks that it's via the inhibitor turret. But CNJ, he is still trying to get that inhibitor. It looks like he's going to get it. Was that the teleport canceled? Yeah, teleport was actually can canceled here just because uh, Christmas trees wanted to push even harder. They knew that Emphamoon was coming down. Does, of course, have a lot of damage here, but CNJ doing some work. Oh, my goodness. That was so close. He was able to answer that structure. They could continue the push, so maybe that was actually an intelligent cancel on the teleport. They will get the inhibitor here and not have to trade inhibitors. So that's important for Sudden Fear because that will be a stolen inhibitor, you'd have to say, from Fornoff. Oh, most definitely. I mean, they canceled the teleport just because Emphamoon was so close. No need to bring that Nah down and... 
and just use him to secure that inhibitor. So Sudden Fear really turning it on. 10,000 gold now the lead. It's been the M for Moon Show. Four shot, 15, 3, and 6 on a 28 kill team. He is massive right here. And I remember when Blue Israel first entered the scene, people tried to struggle to classify, you know, what is the power of this Ezra? And the one thing you can say, obviously his poke is wonderfully strong. Applying the Mirror Mana and the Blade of the Ruin King, even the Iceborne Golem, all on that Mystic Shot. A lot of his damage comes out of his Mystic Shot. But the, the way that this Blue Ezreal scales in an interesting way is his, he kind of hyperscales in mobility. He has such a short cooldown on the Arcane Shift that he's able to influence these long, drawn-out fights. It doesn't matter how much gap goes or or mobility in Italy has, he's still able to be chased down by Enfermoon between the Flash and the Arcane Shift. So he's just getting around these fights. He's being completely able to freely damage. He isn't eating any damage whatsoever in the back line right here. So credit to Christmas Trees and uh, to Bomi for being a strong front line. But the damage from Enfermoon cannot be ignored. Oh, most definitely. And Sudden Fear are far enough ahead at this stage as well that the initial Wombo burst damage is enough to put Fornot on the run. And then who else better than a blue Ezreal to chase everyone down and finalize those kills. And as we just saw, as Fornok, they might be trying to engage the tidal wave to come through Christmas trees. He's about to evolve, and there's the Nar straight into the wall. CNJ's dead already. Zaldo's gonna have to run everyone melting on the side of Fornok. Naya wonders where everyone's gone. And it's gonna be Sudden Fear now able to potentially even push for the win. Four kills for free right here. That time the Nar was massive in that fight, instantly blowing up Moya. The most annoying member in the back, healing up, getting the poke down, even with the execution damage. But Sudden Fear going to run up the front. And what you have to say is an upset. Looks like they could get their first win in the OPL. Yeah, most definitely. Beautiful play coming out of Sudden Fear. And you have to say that their team comp was disgusting as well. So much lockdown as Zelda trying to deter this Sudden Fear team from taking down his Nexus. But they're not going to be bothered by the fish because the Nexus is exposed. A decent Aqua Prison to come through. Collateral damage coming down here as well, but that's going to be the game. CNJ is even going to survive here, and congratulations to Sudden Fear. What beautiful play. Yeah, Sudden Fear, the last team to qualify for the OPL, came up massive in this game. And who else but M for Moon right there? He finished the game 17-3-8. That is a highlight reel performance by any metric whatsoever. But he was afforded that by his team. He had so many AoE CC initiators and tanky frontliners. We thought it was the Maokai who'd be the tanky frontliner yeah. that Enfermoon couldn't break through. But he never got to that point. He got snowballing on that blue Ezreal. And Maokai, he looked relatively squishy in comparison. So Most we're going to see we're gonna see a replay just cap off tonight's play right here. So loading the replay in. We're going to start this replay. It's one of the last team fights here. So fairly late into the game right here. And we're going to see just how this Sudden Fear team comp works. It's consistently been Paps in the front line initiating right here. And you see there's so much AoE CC, they're actually able to split both sides. The Cataclysm traps three people right here. And we can't see him on the screen right here, but M for Moon. He is so maneuverable and long range on this Ezra. He's going to go after Moya right here. He actually uses the flash right there. His Arcane Shifters was second off cooldown. Got the exit kill right there. But the, the blue Ezreal, in those kind of really unorganized, spread out team fights, his mobility was the key. He had the chase with the Iceborne Gauntlet. He had the cooldown reduction to ensure the, what, three, four second cooldown on the Arcane Shift. Blue Ezreal won them that game. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic to see. But that brings us to the end of the day here for the first day of the OPL. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I've, of course, been Atlas. This is Papa Smithy, and thanks from everyone, including Pastry Time and our whole production team, and we'll see you on Monday.